Pong, the world's first true video game. This simple two-dimensional arcade game simulates table tennis, where players control paddles and defend their side of the game. The first person to make it to 11 points wins. Even though this game seems boring and really bad in relation to modern day video games, Pong was the start of one of the biggest industries in the world today. How did video games evolve from Pong, made by Atari in 1972, to the various games most of us are familiar with in 2015? This is the evolution of gaming. When Pong was first created, humanity had never really seen or played a true video game, so there was nothing to compare it to. This was a new frontier, full of new jobs and opportunities, and the start of the gaming industry. Pong soon became very popular and was a huge success. But enough about the world's first game. Let's talk about the world's first video game console, the Magnavox Odyssey. The Magnavox Odyssey, created by the company Magnavox, sold 330,000 units while the console was active. Alright, let's fast forward to 1974 when there were a couple of notable video games. One of them was Fast Track 10, the first racing game ever created, as well as the first arcade game to use ROM. The other notable release is Maze Wars, which is considered to be the earliest FPS or first person shooter. Later in the decade, the gaming companies began growing. In 1977, Atari released the video game computer system, otherwise known as Atari 2600. It became the most successful console of its time. Also in 1977, the company Nintendo released the Color TU Game 6, which included six different versions of the game Pong. There are many more games that are released in the 70s, but for now, we'll move on to the 80s. A great time period for popular culture to emerge. In this decade, we start to see some familiar games being made, such as Donkey Kong, Super Mario Bros. The Legend of Zelda <laughs> Mega Man <laughs> Pac Man Centipede. That centipede is moving very fast. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh no. And many more, all released in the 1980s. There is a very important year in the 80s, where we see one of the biggest gaming companies in the world get on its feet. In the year 1985, Nintendo releases the NES, or the Nintendo Entertainment System, which is still considered today to be one of the most popular and fun consoles ever. 
Along with NES, Nintendo also releases Super Mario Bros. and sells over 10 million copies before the end of the year, about 40 million over its lifetime, making it the best selling game of all time until 2006 when Nintendo released Wii Sports, which sold over 82 million copies. But more on that later. The first popular mainstream handheld console to come out is the Game Boy, made by Nintendo and released in 1989. This handheld was bundled with Tetris. This next period of history in the evolution of gaming marks the beginning of the first console war. Sega does what, Nintendo don't. Genesis does! 16-bit arcade graphics. You can't do this on Nintendo! Genesis does! 16-bit sports action. You can't do this on Nintendo! Genesis does! Genesis does! Genesis does! Genesis does! Get Joe Montana free, Pat Riley free, Buster Douglas free, Super Monaco GP free, or Collins free. What Nintendo? Buy a 16-bit Genesis system between now and October 31st and... For a while, the NES pretty much dominated the video game market, at least until Sega Genesis came out in 1989. This war was full of attack ads, catchy slogans, and made-up terminology like blast processing. The Sega Genesis has blast processing. Super Nintendo doesn't. So what's Blast Processing do? And uh, what if you don't have Blast Processing? The first console war was over around 1994 with Nintendo being the clear winner after releasing the SNES, or Super Nintendo Entertainment System. The second console war, starting in 1995, marked the rise of one of the three gaming giants, Sony. Sony enters the video game industry with an amazing console, known as the PlayStation. This system, actually released in 1994, used a revolutionary disc-based format instead of a cartridge-based format. Nintendo released the extremely popular N64 in 1996 to compete with Sony in the console war, and Sega released the Saturn, which ultimately failed. Overall, the PlayStation became the first console to sell over 100 million units and won the war. Before we move on to the third console war, there are some video games in the 90s that are worth noting. Killer Instinct, Grand Theft Auto, Sonic the Hedgehog, and Mortal Kombat. Alright, let's keep moving forward to the next stage in the evolution of gaming, the third console war, starting in 2000, this time with four competitors, Nintendo with the GameCube, which was literally a cube that played games, Sony with the PlayStation 2, Sega with the Dreamcast, which was a disaster, it only sold 9 million units, and finally, the new competitor, Microsoft with the Xbox. The Xbox, originally short for the Direct Xbox, gave Microsoft a foothold in the gaming industry. The console war is over by 2004, with Sony again winning by selling around 150 million consoles. From the period of 2005 to 2013, video game quality significantly increased. Everything from the graphics to the cinematic stories. This is the time period where the fourth console war takes place. Sony's PlayStation 3 versus Microsoft's Xbox 360 versus Nintendo's Wii. Surprisingly, Sony does not come out on top of this one. Nintendo wins with the Wii, selling about 101.15 million consoles. The others were at about 80 million units each. The Nintendo Wii is a very important stage in the evolution of gaming, as it is the first time anyone had used motion controls. Later in the decade, Sony released something very similar the PlayStation Move. Same with Microsoft, they came out with the Xbox Connect. Besides consoles, we see PC gaming becoming more and more popular. The company Blizzard released one of the most popular online games ever, the World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft helped to popularize MMORPGs, or massively multiplayer online role-playing games. People have spent in total 6 million years playing this game. Way to go, productivity. Nintendo's Wii Sports was also very important. The reason why Wii Sports sold so many copies is because each Wii system originally came with the game, making it the best selling game of all time. In 2009, Gearbox Studios released a very popular sci-fi game called Borderlands. Both Blizzard and Gearbox Studios are headquartered in Dallas. Today we have an inside look on video game creation, as well as an opinion on video games from an actual Gearbox Studios employee. 
What is your favorite thing about working at Gearbox Studios? My favorite thing is the people I work with. They're really fun and very, uh, they love what they do. So going to work every day is a lot of fun. And what I'm wearing right now, shorts and a t-shirt, is how I dress for work, which is pretty awesome. And it's just a really great job. If you can find a job that you love to do, then it's fun going to work. I can't wait for Monday morning. I love going to work. Alright. What is your um, job slash function at Gearbox? I'm a level designer. We have different disciplines. There's a, primary ones are there's the producers, there's the coders, the artists, and then the level designers. And we take all the stuff that everyone else makes and we have to put it together. I have to come up with the, the levels, the things you play that are hopefully fun and interesting. That's what I have to do. Uh -huh. In general terms, what are the steps that game developers take in making a video game? It's, there's a lot of similarities to movie making. We have a pre-production stage where we have concept people and we talk a lot about what kind of story we're going to tell and what we want to do in the game and what kind of new ideas for gameplay and things like that. So there's a, a kind of a process and a lot of iteration because it's not easy to come up with something that's cool the first time. You'll play it a lot and you'll test it a lot and then finally when you get something you go, okay, this is it and then you work to ship it. What was the first video game that you ever played? First game I played. Well, I'm really old, so the first game I played was Pong with a little ball bouncing back and forth. <laughs> and what was the first uh, video game that you have ever worked on? First game, I came into the industry uh, in 97, and the first game I worked on is called Prey. And it actually got released in 2005 by a different company. We had sold it at that time. If you had to work at any other video game studio or company, which one would, you, would it be and why? I want to be at Gearbox a lot for a lot of reasons. When I first came to Texas, there were a lot of video game companies here in the Dallas area. Most of them are gone now. And uh, the last two big ones were like id Software and Gearbox. And this is the place I want to be. I have friends at other studios like Blizzard and Valve that are, I like them a lot and I like the games they make. But I'm committed to staying in this area because I have kids and I want to get them through school, so I don't want to go anywhere else. There are a few more video games from this period that we want to talk about, but we'll do that later. The last period of gaming history is from 2014 to the present, where the fifth and current console war is ongoing. At this point, the war is being fought between Sony's PlayStation 4, Microsoft's Xbox One, and Nintendo's Wii U. Even though no one knows which console will eventually win, analytics show that PlayStation 4 will win, Xbox One will come in second, and Wii U will trail behind. These analytics are based off current sales. Today we have an employee from GameStop who talks about what kids and adults are buying in the popular game store, as well as what the video game industry may look like in the near future. I am 23. Alright. And uh, how many like, years or months have you been working here at GameStop? Uh, it'll be uh, four years in August, on August 1st. Oh wow, that's been a lot. And uh, your name is Gary, right? Yep. All right. So the first question is, um, <clears throat> how often have you been playing video games? Uh, I've been playing video games since I was about four years old. Uh, I, my first system was the Sega Genesis, which was yeah came out back in like 1991. So. All right. And uh, what types of games do you often like sell? Like, what's like often sold here? Oh, um, it's. It's pretty pretty varied from all over. Like of course a lot of people come in looking for shooters and yeah. and we've got, you know, the JRPG crowd. Like it's pretty pretty varied, you know, just Alright. And uh what, what kind of impact has next gen consoles had on what people can do with gameplay and the way they interact with the game? Oh uh, it's as far as the systems themselves go, it hasn't really been that much of a big difference or a big advancement. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be really different here in a couple of years mm -hmm. uh, with virtual reality kind of coming back yeah. into the picture. Uh, that may change because uh, Microsoft's got its got its own holographic thing. Sony's got one that they're working on. Uh, and then there's all these off-branded ones from like Oculus and then mm -hmm. uh, HTC is working on yeah. one as well. So that's probably going to be the big, the big thing that to look out for here in about two or three years. All right. Um, how do you think gaming has changed in the past ten years? 
Uh, let me see. It was really kind of with the the PS2 where it kind of really changed from as far as story goes. And then we had like The Last of Us on PlayStation uh, last year. Uh, that was kind of the, the point where games really got really big as far as story narrative went. Uh, just because characters became more dynamic and advanced and you could actually relate to these people. You could see what they looked like and they did. Uh, and it's just going to keep getting better, especially if virtual reality gets really, really big. Yeah. So, um, do you think video games have brought more opportunity for jobs and revenue for people? Oh, yeah. I mean, especially with the, with the indie crowd. Uh, basically, anybody can just download a game engine and just start fooling around in it. Uh, that's that's what I'm actually doing, like with the, the Unity engine. You can just download it and just start messing around in it. And uh, that even can land you a job at a developer. Yeah. Uh, that's another big part of the modding community. Uh, people just create mods, and sometimes the developer sees how good that mod is and is just like, hey, come work for us. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. All right. Even though the console war is ongoing and many people are still upgrading to the latest consoles, there are still many people still playing the current generation. Here today we have a student at Rowlett High School who plays video games in his free time and gives his opinion about gaming in general. How old are you? 17. What is the console that you play games on? Uh, Xbox 360. Uh, why do you like it more than the PlayStation 3? Uh, because Xbox 360 it basically has like more content to it and it has a better firewall so not many hackers can get into it. Uh, how many games uh, do you have for this system, do you think? Ten. Not that many, though. Not that many. Uh, how often do you play video games? I, I play a lot during the summer, but since school started, I don't play that much anymore. All right. Uh, what is your favorite genre of video games? Uh, fighting. Fighting? Okay. Fighting. And uh, what is your favorite game? Uh, Mortal Kombat 9. Okay. Uh, how many of your friends play this game? Like five-ish. Okay. Why do you like to play video games? Kind of something that passes the time and it's like just just to pass the time pretty much. All right, let's backtrack a few years to 2013 when one of the biggest and most controversial games of all time came out. On September 17, 2013, Rockstar Games released Grand Theft Auto V for the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, shattering at least seven different sales records. GTA V made $800 million and sold about 11 million copies of the game in one day. The game itself generated controversy due to its violence, language, nudity. This game escalated in an ongoing argument involving one question, does violence in video games affect how people think and act in the real world? Do you think violence in video games affects how people think and act in the real world? For some people it may, but from others it may not. It's just for like, it depends on who you are. If like, you're mostly influential, then for you, then you're gonna go cuckoo. Do you think violent video games affect how people act in, real, in the real world? No, not at all. Yeah. I play so many, so many violent video games. And I would actually, in real life, consider myself a pacifist. I don't think I would ever yeah. hurt another person, ever. Uh, like, it's just a really good way to release. Like, if I've had a really bad day, I'll just go home and I'll kill, I'll kill somebody in a video yeah. game. And I feel so much better. Yeah. Uh, but I would never, I would never kill anybody in real life, ever, for no yeah. reason. Do you think that violence in video games affects how people think and behave in the real world? I actually have strong opinions on that one. I do not think it does any more than movies do. In fact, I'm a really big proponent of the rating system on video games. I tell a lot of my friends, don't buy these really extreme, crazy games for your nine-year-old, because I find a lot of people think video games are for kids, and a lot of them don't realize that some of what's in games is pretty serious nowadays. And so I think we should be able to make uh, M games, but I don't think little kids should be playing them. But I also think that it's a good, out, uh, good outlet for young people. I think it's better to get into a video game and drive crazy in GTA than it is in real life. So I say, go do that in a video game. So I think they're, they're a good release for, for people. Now that we've gone over the main points, games, and wars in the history of gaming, leading us to the present day, what will the future of gaming look like? 
Will we see the emergence of virtual reality? Will we see a continuation of the consoles? Or will we see something else entirely? We'll just have to wait and see because this is the evolution of gaming.